How much faster is Nvidia's RTX 5060 laptop GPU compared to the 4060 from last gen? I've compared both in 25 games at 1440p and 1080p resolutions to show you all the differences. The newer RTX 5060 laptop GPU has 8% more CUDA, Tensor, and RT cores compared to the older RTX 4060 laptop GPU. They both have 8 gigs of total VRAM capacity, but the 5060 uses faster GDDR7 memory. The 5060 can clock a little higher too, but it also has a higher power limit. Well, not according to Nvidia's spec sheet, but in the real world, we don't find the 4060 to go above 100 watts or so in most gaming workloads. So for all intents and purposes, the 4060 is more like a 110 watt part, while the 5060 can go up to 115 watts. More power equals more performance. So a 4060 at 110 watts is about equivalent to a 5060 running at 70 watts. With both running at 115 watts though, so full power, the 5060 is 16% faster than the 4060 in this best case synthetic test. Actual games are a different story, as you'll see soon. I'm using ASUS's Tough F16 to do this comparison, but if we find gaming laptops with either of these GPUs on a good sale, we'll add them to our gaming laptop website. Check it out with the link below to save money on your next gaming laptop. Unfortunately, the GPU is not the only difference between these two laptops. The 5060 is also paired with a newer processor and faster RAM, which is pretty common for a laptop with a newer GPU, but I was still able to get the CPUs performing about the same. 14th gen is only a small 13th gen refresh, and although the 14650HX has two extra P cores over the 13650HX, I was able to disable them in BIOS for this testing. So both processors have the same core count. So the 5060 laptop may still get a small edge due to the processor and RAM difference, but it's honestly going to be very small. Most of the difference we'll see between these two are due to the GPU differences. The 5060 laptop in red used more power in five of these six games tested with the charger connected. So anywhere between half a percent to 11% more power was used by the 5060. The 5060 does provide more FPS in these games though. So from a performance per watt perspective, the 5060 in red ends up more power efficient despite using more power. The older 4060 in purple was warmer in most cases. Though this isn't a perfectly fair comparison, as there are some changes to the cooler between the 2024 and 2025 Tough F16. The 5060 in red was clocking higher in all six games too, which makes sense based on the higher boost clock we saw on the spec sheet. These are the power levels being reached for each GPU in these games. The 5060 in red wasn't that different considering it's meant to be a 115 watt part. We only saw near max power reached in The Witcher 3 out of these games. Let's get into the games, starting with Cyberpunk 2077. This game actually had the biggest improvement on the 5060 out of all 25 games tested at 1440p, reaching a 24% higher average frame rate over the 4060. I triple checked the results and this is just an exception. 5060 result, and closer to some of the lower powered 5070s we've tested. The 5060 is still 15% ahead at the lower 1080p resolution, but again, this game sees an above average gain with the 5060 and is far from normal. The gap is a bit smaller with the ray tracing ultra preset and DLSS enabled, with the 5060's lead now a more average result out of the 25 games tested, with around a 10% lead at both resolutions. It's definitely not all massive gains for the 5060. Take Spider-Man 2 for example, where both laptops were quite close together at both resolutions. I generally find this game to care more about the CPU than GPU, so I think this one shows that our small processor difference isn't going to matter too much for this comparison. Meanwhile at the other end of the spectrum, we've got Space Marine 2, where even the dips in performance on the 5060, as shown by the 1% lows, were ahead of the average FPS coming out of the 4060. The 5060 was reaching a 17% higher average frame rate compared to the 4060 at 1080p, the biggest difference at this resolution out of all 25 games tested, and the 5060 was 
18% ahead at the higher 1440p resolution. Assassin's Creed Shadows, on the other hand, struggled to hit 60fps at medium settings on both GPUs, and the 5060 was only slightly ahead. Honestly, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between them in this game. You could of course use features like DLSS upscaling to boost the frame rates on both, but I haven't done that as that uses a lower render resolution, and this is meant to be a GPU comparison, rather than a showcase of what to expect in games. Dying Light 2 had some big gains with the 5060, well, as big as we're going to see in this comparison anyway. With the 5060 reaching a 16% higher average FPS at 1440p, and able to get above 60 FPS with the highest setting preset, something the 4060 couldn't average without upscaling. I've tested this game with ray tracing and DLSS enabled too, as RT is more resource intensive, and at 1080p, the 5060 was 16% ahead of the 4060, and 17% ahead at 1440p. Alan Wake 2 wasn't really much different on either GPU. I had to use low settings to get this usable without upscaling, as it's a fairly intensive game. But honestly, it still looks pretty good even on low. The difference doesn't really change even if we use the highest setting preset, with ray tracing on low and DLSS on. The 5060 is only a few FPS ahead with a 4% lead at 1080p, and a 7% lead at 1440p. Apex Legends was only 5% faster on the 5060 at 1080p, so basically nothing in practice. But then at 1440p, it's 12% faster, an above average improvement. But what's more important is the 21% boost to the 1% low, meaning the 5060 laptop is more stable and consistent, which is probably more important in a competitive game like this. Black Myth Wukong was just over 60 FPS on the 5060 at 1080p, which equates to a 9% performance improvement over the 4060, with a similar 10% boost at 1440p, though that's only a 4 FPS difference. Instead of wasting your time individually talking through the rest of the 17 games tested, I'm just going to quickly skip through the rest of the results on screen now, so feel free to pause the video if you want to take a closer look at any specific game. The reason I test so many games is so that we can get a much more accurate average result result from a wider selection of titles, which allows us to draw a better conclusion. In other words, more data equals more better. Let's take a look at those average differences next. On average, over all 25 games tested, at 1080p, the RTX 5060 laptop GPU was almost 9% faster compared to the RTX 4060 laptop GPU. Again, some of this difference may be due to the CPU and RAM difference discussed earlier, but I doubt it's that much. Regardless, these are the sort of gen-on-gen -gen improvements we can expect between a 4060 and 5060 laptop. Stepping up to the higher 1440p resolution, and the 5060's average lead is slightly higher at 10%. Cyberpunk 2077 is a big outlier, but as I said, I triple checked the data and got the same results each time. That game just runs really well on this 5060 laptop, and close to some lower powered 5070s. Here's how things look if we average the FPS from all 25 games together. This makes it really easy to see the differences. Ultimately, the 5060 laptop gets us around 60 FPS at 1440p in the games tested with an average of high setting levels. So not a massive generational improvement, but at least there is one, which hasn't always been a guarantee with the 50 series. I suppose that Nvidia would say that the difference is bigger if we used multi-frame generation with the 5060, which is one of their big advertising points for the new 50 series. But I think they've overhyped it a bit and used it to make dodgy, misleading marketing graphs. Only the newer RTX 50 series has access to the new multi-frame generation feature, which basically just means the 5060 can generate more AI frames than the 4060. Both laptops can use frame gen in the 2x mode, where one frame is generated for each real frame, but with multi-frame gen, the 5060 can 
also use the 3x mode, where two frames are generated per one real frame, or the 4x mode, where three frames are generated per one real frame. Look, I think frame generation is a useful feature when it's used correctly. And according to this investigation by Tim from Hardware Unboxed, that includes single player games that aren't latency sensitive, with a base frame rate between 70 to 80 FPS prior to generating frames. And to achieve that on this level of hardware, we're either looking at 1080p or 1440p with the settings turned down. Most of the games that I personally play fall into that bucket of being good with frame generation. So when I play games on my own computer, yeah, I turn multi-frame generation on and I don't think about it. It results in a smoother experience that's better to play. But I also have more powerful hardware than this and it's much easier for me to hit that base frame rate. At the end of the day, it's simply not fair to try and compare AI generated frames against normal rasterized frames and pretend that the two are equal and that the AI generated frames represent an FPS boost. The visual quality and latency aren't the same. The 4060 can still use frame gen in the 2x mode if you really want to generate AI frames. And I don't think multi-frame generation makes the 5060 an absolute must-have. It's more of an optional nice feature if you've got it available. What will be more likely to affect your choice between these two GPUs is the price. Now prices will of course change over time, so check Check those links below the video for updates and to see if there are any current sales running. Because if gaming laptops with either of these GPUs do have a good sale, we'll add them to our gaminglaptop.deals website. We update that every day to include all of the best sales. So make sure you check it out regularly to save money on your next gaming laptop with that link below. Right now in mid-September, it's harder to buy an RTX 4060 laptop at a good price than it was before. Either Nvidia are making fewer 4060 GPUs dies in favour of the newer 5060, or laptop brands aren't making as much new stock with 40 series. Either way, this results in 5060 laptops often being available for less. But of course, it all depends on sales and the specific laptop the GPU is in. The cheapest deal we've ever had on the GamingLaptop.dil site for a 4060 was $650, and so far for the 5060 it's $950, but that will get lower over time as it gets older. From a cost per frame perspective, buying a 4060 laptop for $900 is about the same value as buying a 5060 laptop for $1000, at least in terms of raw FPS without counting features like multi-frame generation. So that means you're paying a similar amount per FPS of performance that you actually get in games. This also means that a $1200 4060 laptop offers worse gaming value than a $1300 5060 laptop if you're shopping for more premium models. We haven't seen 5060 laptops this cheap just yet, but I'm sure they'll get there, which is why I've included some lower values too. If you're buying now, the 5060 kinda wins by default due to a lack of supply of the older 4060, but the 4060 isn't too far behind the 5060 in raw performance if you are able to find a 4060 on a good sale, and you don't care so much about multi-frame generation. If you've already got a 4060 from a couple of years ago, don't consider the 5060 as an upgrade. It feels like more of a side grade, and it's not going to offer that much of a better experience over your existing 4060. As for both GPUs having just 8 gigs of VRAM, that can definitely be a limitation, especially at higher resolutions like 1440p. And a lot of these laptops do ship with 1440p screens. The last thing you want to do when spending thousands of dollars on a brand new gaming laptop is to get stuck with something that isn't going to offer a great great experience, especially if you'll be using that laptop for years to come. Which is why I recently worked with Steve from Hardware Unboxed to show the VRAM limits in gaming laptops. So check that one out next before you buy.